Hey, I want to make a haul video real quick of the items I brought home from a recent day of shopping in New Orleans this past Saturday. And what you hear in the background are the cicadas and they're a little bit like a thermostat because you don't hear that sound unless it's very, very hot, which it is. And it's, it's just so hot. And it was hot in New Orleans too. Well, here's the, here's the haul. Okay. The rug, first of all, the substrate of this rug is soft. It isn't stiff. And I've found that your higher quality rugs flounce and fold like a fabric and they aren't so rigid. This has wear in several spots. I mean, it's pretty consistent. There was a, there was a traffic pattern across the rug and um, I haven't looked at it completely. However, it was $12.99 and there is no funk or odor and there hasn't been a lot of grit as I was unrolling it, there wasn't a lot of grit. So I think it came from a well-kept place. And it has very pretty color. There is a pattern worn through a lot of the rug. If I were to lay it out flat, I think it's about 7 by 10. And if it were laid out flat, you could see. You see that? Now that's going to be throughout the rug. I mean, to be honest with you, I have it turned towards the more rich, least worn jewel tones, and it's soft. I believe it is um, a wool and handmade, and it's large. So, if I can't work with it on a floor, it is at least good for covering a bench or ottoman footstool, possibly something else. So I was real proud of the $13 rug. I still think it's very beautiful and I don't really mind the shabbiness of it. I kind of like that it has that age. I think it might be very old. This little thing, there's a handle. It just, you want to think that it is some sort of agricultural farming tool. I don't know. I think it was probably painted. It, I, I don't know if it was an actual tool at one point or made to look like the tool. Let's see. There's no hole where you would think a handle once was, a long handle, but this, I don't know what it's for. Okay, but I like it. It's got a sort of farm, agrarian, farmhouse, primitive thing going on. All right, so this Lazy Susan, new, most likely a Hobby Lobby, or decorating store like Garden Ridge or something like that. It was taped with this basket and with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these, which have a hanger. Each has a hanger. And some of the designs are really kind of cute. Each has a different design. I suspect they are a Hobby Lobby type thing were made within the last 10 years to accommodate the boho craze and meant as an ensemble to hang on the wall. That's what I think those likely were. But this is a higher quality basket. These, this little color, that is the PVC plastic and their straw and you can see the straw is bundled tightly but not nearly as neat as this 
So I think that's definitely a more high quality basket. It's pretty, it's unmarked. These, this set of eight, and this Lazy Susan were all $8. They were taped together. That is what caught my eye, poking from the bottom of the pile. And then I thought, well, surely I can get my $8 back out of that lot. Now this is just a little brown, blue, sort of a needlepoint, isn't it? It looks like a, yeah, it's made to look like a needlepoint. Just a little chintzy vintage photo album in pretty good shape. That was $2. Here is a cheese crock, likely made somewhere in the Northeast, like Pennsylvania or New Jersey. And it is for Mississippi State. I figured someone would like that. This was $2. This is damage free. None of this has been washed. I have pulled off tags. That's the mark. It's cat's eye. And I think with the fall season coming up and the cat, you know, the people who, the cat craze which is currently a trend among resellers. They're doing some sales of, of cat figurines and whatnot. But I figured with Halloween coming up, a black cat, and maybe it was for food bowls. Maybe somebody made that for their cat. This is a composite wood. I think it is made with sawdust and resin. And someone's used it as an ashtray, more than likely. But it is a pipe holder. It is an Indian moccasin pipe holder. And it's actually not as old as I thought it might be. I thought it was potentially antique. But there were some like it made in the 60s as well. Here's a little piece of Annie glass. California Company. And that says it's dishwasher safe. But that's a nice little anti glass trinket. Here is what I thought was very 90s. But it was a line made in 2007. There are lots of pieces. It's called Prospero by Design Works. And it is a cookie jar. But it's just a canister and could be used for whatever, right? It's damage free and it will clean up and look even nicer. This is by Smith Glass or L.E. Smith and it is one in a set of three sizes of containers, can canisters. There were three, but it's shaped like a little milk can. You can see the handle and where the rivets were and it's a nice color. I like the color. It's not quite cobalt. This excited me very, very much because there is a line, there's a pattern of very old Victorian glass called Pioneer or Westward Ho. Actually, actually, there were three names. See, there's an elk, a buffalo or bison and a cabin. So this pattern was introduced by Gillinger, Gillinger or Gillinger and Sons in Philadelphia in 1879 during a time when the expansion of the U.S. territories in the West were very much a novelty and held the fascination of many Victorians uh, with the lore and the tall tales and the realistic tales as well of the 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 great wild west and the, the as the railroads moved through and all the large game and the tribes people and the different tribes and the just the whole exotic nature of all of that of course Victorians were obsessed with it and they had this pattern made which is collectors call Westward Ho. It's sort of like, that's not technically the name, but no one knows it other, no one knows it as Pioneer or Tippecanoe. Actually, it's sort of like the Pyrex pattern called Crazy Daisy. 
Crazy Daisy isn't technically the name of that Pyrex pattern. The name is uh, Spring Blossom. But nobody nobody would recognize it if you ask for Pyrex Spring Blossom. You, you say Pyrex Crazy Daisy, they know what you're talking about. The same here, Westward Ho. Not technically the name. Now, that is not the 1879 version. That is a reproduction from 1930 by a West Virginia class glass company called uh, Wright. Wright Glass, W-R-I-G-H-T, like the Flying Brothers. Anyway, I love it, regardless. Um, the 1879 glass had three lobes. Had two additional lobes on these that come to a point, one point. There would have been a little bit of a lobe there and a little bit of a little lobe there. So this is a reproduction, a very old reproduction of the 1879 pattern, Westward Ho. And I love it. And that, by the way, is a spooner. People kept spoons in those. It was set out as a sign of hospitality. They also kept celery sticks. I won't delve into all of that, but it's just very, very interesting what these uh, different unique tablewares were used for. This is technically a spooner. I mean, you think about it, who's gonna drink from that rim? No one. It was used for celery stalks and for spoons. Showing off your silver spoons in a glass was sort of a status symbol and, status symbol and also signaled hospitality. All right, so there's my Lazy Susan. There's my very 90s, which isn't actually 90s, but is more retro from the 2000s, a throwback. And um, my little canister, which should come in very handy. The Lazy Susan really is quite useful. Um, I'm not sure about what I'm going to resell out of this. Most likely the cat bowl. Probably the pipe holder. The anti glass will be a gift. The MS. You cheese crock will be for sale. I'll hold on to that. I don't think I need that. I don't want those. And I'll probably sell that. So I'll sell a lot. I'm not sure about that thing. I really want to know more about what it is. Now here is my piece de resistance, right? This is the thing that I found and I was like, oh, that's mine. That's for me. That's got to come with me. The colors are unusual. They're very, very bright. And did you know... In the 1920s, bright jewel tones were very much in vogue. And that's the first thing that made me think this was very, very old. And then as you look, you see the crackle in the paint, another sign of age. And then you turn it around and look at the work and ingenuity someone basically corseted the whole piece of fabric into this frame. Really old hardware, flat screw heads. I mean, uh, whatever you call that, not Phillips. It's just really, really old. So I do believe it's an antique. You can test, you can scratch. Anyway, we won't do that. I love it. Um, someone, someone made that and painted that. I don't know why it looks like, um, posterized or paint by number. I don't really understand that, but there is, um, you can tell the wood is roughly hewn and there's a little alligatoring in the, well, it's got a very old varnish on it. The glass has the little imperfections in it. So everything points to it being very old. Now here's the curious thing. Hole and hole. So this could have set like a pediment on top of a piece of furniture. You know, it could have had a mirror. That it set on a dresser. There could have been a mirror inside of it. But it's only like... 24 by 18 it's small I just think it's fantastic I love the elk I love the little bit of um, 
whatever that is, condensation coming out of its mouth. Like it's cold. It's a bugling elk. And I love it. I think it's an antique. I honestly do. And I think someone even made this. It's not, it's, it's fanciful and it's well done, but it's got just a bit of crudeness to it. But whoever put this together was very serious about doing so. And they did a good job. And I, I, I don't know, it just spoke to me. It was just one of those things like, oh, you're mine. Um, yeah, that's for me sitting over there on the floor. I'm going to get, oh, excuse the trash in the back of my truck. At least it's not on the ground, right? Um, so very large textile, hand woven, potentially antique rug with very good color, usable. Got these little boho things for resell. I'm going to hang on to my Westward Ho Spooner. I might, I might try to sell the album the cat bowl, the moccasin pipe holder, this thing. I, I personally, I like that because I like the color. It's a little bit of a teal. And then I'll find more out about this, clean it up. Like none of it's been clean, but um, there was my haul. I spent $107 and I also came home with a sheet, but I didn't spend anything on the sheet. The sheet was free. And I gave that to my mom already. It has a pink and green mini floral. And I figured she could put that with her sewing. But what you see here is um, $107 that I spent in New Orleans. And I'm happy with it. Prospero by Design Works. If you want to see some other really funky pieces that go along with this. Prospero by Design Works. The Annie glass, now that's nice. Come across something like that. I guess I need to put all this back inside. There wasn't room to get it inside to put everything out where you could see it. So, um, there you are. I've been wanting to do a haul video, and now I have. I love this stuff. I just love finding it. I think that's pretty good for $107. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hey, real quick. I knew I'd forgotten something. It's this lamp. I have one like it. Now I have a pair. It is contemporary. It was mass produced. But the design is that of the Atomic Era. A little bit of deco it's just sort of an amalgamation of some uh, some style notes from different eras but I like it and now I have a pair but I had forgotten to include this is there an ant 